caught in the crossfire Hey everyone, this is Eric back again with All Replay and back on this 2008 Dodge Nitro over here at Riley's. Going to look at replacing the passenger rear wheel speed sensor. I have my ESP and my ABS light on and then it triggered uh, some codes to make the transmission computer uh, have a fault in and basically it was running sluggish and slow and then once the shift right, found out that's the passenger rear. So I'm going to scan the codes and make sure one more time before we actually get into replacing it. So I went ahead and cut on the car. You can see that the analog brake system, the traction control and the ESP BAS light is on and that's just on because the airbag needs to be recalibrated. But you will see this come on and basically it says that's a passenger rear. So we're going to take a look at that. Okay. So basically uh, that sensor is right underneath here. Uh, and I'll show you real quick it's right there so it's just one little looks like a two millimeter bolt i could probably do this with it being underneath and uh we'll go from there so let me see if i can unplug this thing and take this whole thing out i guess i'm just going to take the screw out or the bolt out and go from there here's the part i got from raleigh's is a standard it's a als 1932 and this is what it looks like i'll take it out of the packaging so this is what the sensor looks like. So basically just one little nut holding up on. So I should be able to take that nut off and then uh, take it out, you know? All right, so I got a 10 millimeter uh, just rat socket on the ratchet. And we wanna break it loose. And then um, we'll take it out and get it replaced. And make sure you're careful because the muffler is right here. We wanna make sure that you don't touch that hot surface because I have been driving this car you know what I mean so this is the passenger rear and it was like 30 bucks man from O'Reilly so not not bad it was in stock and uh this is something you could do without jacking up the car man so it's pretty easy in my sense so I'm gonna try this out take this little nut out and then um we'll go from there so there's the nut I should be able to just pull this out I think hopefully It may take some channel locks or something, I don't know. Let me work with this thing. It's in there. All right, so basically I got some channel locks and I'm just gonna grab it right here and just kind of wiggle it out to get it come out. I don't wanna break the connector, so uh, just gonna kind of give it a little, a little wiggle worm thing. And uh, we'll see about getting this to come out. breaking it. <clears throat> that thing is on there, man. All right, so a little wiggling and we got it out of here. So I'm gonna pull it straight out. It should come straight on out. We have to turn it a little bit. Come on, baby. Let's do that twist. <laughs> Just let's do the twist. Come on. It's coming, you can see it's coming out, but. Uh, getting all the way out to the issue. Oh my god. Is this thing held up on? I don't want to break it off in there. And if they would have put the tab right here, it would so much easier. It's like the tab is on the wrong freaking way. Man, that's crazy. I mean, what the hell? Is the tab up here? Let me see, because the way this thing is sitting here. This one is like this. So the tab is on top. So okay. I'm gonna have to just take this tab off because this is what's hitting it on the side. Uh, let me wiggle this thing out and then we'll go from there. All right, there it is hanging. Uh, looks like this red tab has to slide up. I'll get a screwdriver. It's a heck of a little sensor, but we'll move this up, take this off and then we'll Put the new one in and slide it back in all right so i was able to take the channel locks and kind of just y'all can see it it's kind of hard to see but kind of pull it up with the channel lock so that should release it and then uh let me unplug this real quick 
All right, so I got the old one out. I'm gonna go ahead and start working on sliding this new one in here, and hopefully it slides in pretty good. And uh, this is a tight fit, man. It's probably just whatever rust was in there. I might try to take the old one to clean it out, but just slide this thing in there and then uh, plug it in. All right, so what I ended up doing was just lining it up and just kind of lightly tapping it in place. Uh, and then now I'm going to hopefully line it up with this hole here so uh, that way I can get this going. And we'll go from there. Let's see if this get this bolt in here. I think it's got to go to the, to the right just a little bit so I can... Yeah, it looks like it, it could rotate a little bit in here. I don't want to go too far with it. There we go. Seems like you can feel it. And then uh, I'm going to tap it in some more. And then uh, oh, it goes no, no. And then let's go ahead and get this all the way in there. And I should hand tighten. Yep. Make sure that's on. And we'll tighten up with the ratchet. Get this all the way. And we'll go from there. And then we'll plug it in and should uh, that coat should go away. Should drive a lot better. <laughs> and we'll look at doing this uh, little speed sensor, you know. So uh, that's basically all it is. We plug this in. Like that. And then we'll just push that little red tab back in in this place. And uh, hopefully this connector's not wore out. I mean, I kind of did pull on it a little bit, but let's try that out. If not, I'll replace the wire harness connector. So pretty simple stuff. That's how easy it is to replace a rear ABS wheel speed sensor. Check out the other videos. If you like this content, man, like, share, subscribe, man. We'll keep it going. Appreciate it. So I checked everything with my code scanner. It looks like I'm getting a reading from that right rear right wheel speed sensor and uh just by looking at it with the alltel maxi it's like the maxi ap200 and basically look at the live data and you can see the actual speed you know increase so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and clear the codes out should go from there